Intertubers, and welcome to a new game series. Uh, this one is um, Sid Meier's Colonization, except that it would actually be more accurate to call it Ryan Reynolds. Brian Reynolds' is co uh, colonization. Uh, Ryan Reynolds was, I think, someone working at uh, Microprose at the time they made Civilization, and this was kind of his side project. Uh, this this game is a sequel of sorts to Civilization from the days when they didn't realise they could just endlessly remake the same game and take people's money off them over and over again. Uh, this is an attempt to do something a bit different. Uh, it's, it's about the colonisation of uh, the Americas by Europe. So, we're going to start by with Customise New World. Uh, now you could start in America, the trouble is if you play this game a lot you kind of get used to it and you know where stuff is which isn't really the authentic experience. Uh, I'm going to customise it because this game seems to hate uh, producing large amounts of um, land. Like if you leave the map editor to its normal defaults you tend to get tiny little islands. Uh, in actual fact, you know, the two continents of North America and South America, they're quite big. So this seems more reasonable. You could mess with the temperature and climate, I won't, um, because you don't really want a land full of deserts or a land full of swamps. Difficulty. I'm not great at this game, so I'm going to go for the middle one. And now, perhaps the most important part. Um, who are we? So each of these three options gets gets something. England gets immigration. Yeah, yeah. England gets more immigration than all the other European powers. Uh, because this game from the 1990s was very much ahead of its time. Next up we have France. Uh, their ability is cooperation. Uh, which means that they piss off the Indians at half a normal rate. So you could call this cooperation. But an alternative way of looking at it is you can be twice as much of an asshole without suffering consequences. Then we have Spain. Their special ability is conquest. Um, Spain gets a bonus when attacking Indian villages. Not the Indians themselves, only the villages. So this is like a plus 50% to war crimes bonus. Then finally you have the Netherlands also known as the best faction, uh, their special ability is trade. That means they have an economy that doesn't collapse if you fart at it. Uh, you see, one important thing in this game is uh, getting cargo from the New World, carrying it home to Europe and selling it. Uh, if you're the Netherlands, you can sell the same cargo twice and not have the price crash down to like half its original value when you sell the first load. Uh, but even though this is the best faction, and even though Spain is probably the best faction for quote-unquote doing Thanksgiving, there can really be only one option. Yes, I am from England, and so that's who I'm going to be. It can be Walter Raleigh, but... Start if we mean to go on. So, England, blah blah blah, yes. Uh, the English colonies are here seeking um, religious freedom, among other things. That probably means that you can be any kind of Christian you want, then if you're any other religion, it, it's not going to go well for you. But still, we have. Still, this is uh, kind of what we're about. Um, and in this game, religion is tied to immigration. Um, so yeah, we need only two thirds the normal number of crosses to get immigrants. I'll explain this later. For the great glory of England, we dub the Viceroy of the New World. Settle it and bring wealth and glory to yourself. I'll do half of that.
in the year of our Lord 1492. <laughs> Left by the Great Conquistador, God Emperor Zixafon. Oh, this is gonna be a laugh, right? You can't skip this, by the way. Unless you're watching the recording, I suppose. So, here we are. Um, actually, I'm going to turn the sound down a little bit. So, game options. There's one thing I like to change here. Uh, end of turn notifications. The rest seems reasonable. So, this is the sum total of my colonising force. One boat, which is crap. Um, one soldier. One guy with one pioneer, which is uh, kind of like the settlers in a uh, in civilization. They're able to uh, cut down forests and um, build roads and irrigate land, that sort of thing. Discovery of the new world. Oopsie. There we go. Yeah, end of turn. So, now for the big decision. Where do we settle? Now, this is actually a great location. Um, that's an Indian village. We do not want to get too close to that. Uh, but what we have here is a river. Uh, rivers make everything better, you can grow more food, and they also act as a road. So, I think I'm going to make landfall here. The Iroquois tribe, yes, 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 11 villages. Will we live in peace? Yes, of course. Um, you can't actually see if I've got my fingers crossed behind my back here. Let us smoke a peace pipe to celebrate our perpetual friendship. And yet, yeah, send wagon trains to trade. That's fairly important. Trading with the Indians is a big part of this game. So yeah, so I think I'm actually going to set up shop here with both my units. End of turn. Oh man, that forest. I want it, but I can't have it. So here we go with our first colony, called Jamestown. Um, so it turns out that when you build a colony you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buildings magically appear uh, for free. And um, it seems that we're currently mining the, uh, getting two food out of the starting square and three furs. We don't have much choice about that. Oh, and those totem poles indicate another Indian village. That's unfortunate. Right, it's there, I see it. And I'm going to tell my pioneers to plough this land. And now I have some tricky decisions to make. So. This guy, by default, is creating six furs. That's not bad. Um, we can sell those furs for five each. Now the alternative... I mean, there's plenty of alternatives, but... Uh, six furs means he's making 30... 30 GP a turn, that's not bad. Now one alternative is, we could make him into a fur trader. Uh, so this time he destroys three units of fur and makes three units of coats. If we do that, then uh, we're losing five each from the fur, but we're gaining three times whatever the price of coats is. View European status. 
Yeah, not nearly enough. It's actually better for him to... Uh, so all we care about is money. And I think that is all I care about right now. Then... Making furs is the way to go. End of turn. Okay. Like I care. And what we have here is closest thing to wonders in the original Civilization game. You collect found founding fathers and they do helpful things. Um, there's two main options here. Peter Minuit lets you buy land from the Indians for free. That's good. Henry Hudson doubles your furs, the furs you make. And I might pick him. Hernan Cortez is Really, only useful if you want an early war with the Indians, and I don't. And I think the second two aren't really useful right now. I'm gonna go with Hudson. Whoa, a silver mine. That could be useful. Yeah. We have Cook on this master distiller from London. Watch that fuss around with this boat a bit too much. So, kind of load up with some cargo. It's not terrible. boat is kind of slow. And the Indians like me, they're giving me stuff for free. Sugar, right. So this is this is actually very convenient. I'm making sugar, and I have a master distiller on the way who can turn that sugar into rum. Cargo from the New World, yet? Yeah. Unload all cargo. Sell for two two five. Can we recruit anyone else? Oh, all of these are good. Right, all of them, but I'm going to take the season scouts first. Right. Plow again. A distiller. Um, because he's an expert, he's uh, making six units. See, if I just have some normal guy make rum, he'd only make three. But as an expert, he's making double the amount. Now, there is the slight issue here that we're running out of food, but the ploughing should take care of that. Now, scouts are good for visiting Indian villages. Where you need pen and paper handy. Or oh, notepad, like okay, I'm just going to uh, write this down. Uh, 
and Master Sugar Planters is, is also kind of a big deal uh, because we can train, the Indians will train you in certain skills. He has some nearby lands, that's quite helpful. take the sugar, it's kind of earmarked for being turned into Expert fisherman, oh that's so good. They also want tools. I think it really is time to get to get some kind of industry going, and that means we're going to need lumber. I guess I should explain the production system here. Um, you can put people to work, and they'll produce stuff. In this case, lumber. You could also be a farmer and make food, or plant cotton, or get fur. Those are all options. You could also have put someone to work. Like if this guy's making lumber, then I could put this guy to work in the carpenter house. Uh, carpenters produce hammers, and hammers can be used to build buildings like the docks. Uh, docks would be useful because I could then put a fisherman to work here. You know, like the expert fishermen that the Indians down here have offered to, to train for me. But for the moment, I think this guy's way too useful making rum. some other things we need, like, yes, if I settle there, then I can get onto the silver mine, and that's really important. One, two, that's two silver mines here, oh, so much sugar. start mining silver immediately. It's not the dumbest idea in the world. It's probably better to visit more villages. So unload all cargo. And I can recruit. Oh boy, expert lumberjacks are on offer. I'll take them. here, I can also go here and perhaps build... 
Yeah, I mean, that square there would be an amazing spot for a settlement. Well, sugar planters, more tools, need rum and coats. Ah, but this is why it's worth initially scouting. Sometimes they'll just give you stuff. And that 320 is kind of a big deal. is should I pop these uh, goody huts and I think the answer is no I'll wait until it's better for me to do that oh we found the Incas so the thing about the Incas is they're rich and they have some good things that they can uh, They'll teach us how to farm, that's good. And they want trade goods or rum. And they just randomly gave me valuable beads out of nowhere. This is going pretty well. So it's getting a little tricky. If I make this guy a farmer, then this guy can be a carpenter and help build the docks. Room for one more, actually. But Here we now have a decent haul of rum, and I guess furs. Can I just buy the docks? So very tempting, but no. I think there's better uses for that than my sudden mountains of money. Live among the natives. Then I should become a master fisherman. Yikes! They're already alarmed by me. They're still giving me free petty criminals. Ah. These guys are also going to be carpenters because I need the docks finished and I need it finished quickly. 46 hammers. If I cut, switch this guy over as well. sure what to do with those petty criminals. So I have a ton of money now.
Now you can actually very expensively train people in various skills. And I think, yes, expert silver miners, I think this is worth it. I'm gonna make these guys, I'm gonna give them tools. Expensive though it is. news I guess. Like I, I don't even know where my enemies are right now. Wait, if those things didn't show up then that's because it's the water isn't it? have to build wagon trains to export stuff, but that is the plan. So there we have a silver miner and not a lot else. Yep, yeah, that is water. Silver miner. He can get he can get where he needs to go immediately, so I'm gonna make this guy a farmer. I make this guy a silver miner. Six silver, awesome. Turn this guy back into a pioneer so he can build a road on the silver mine. this docks change. 16 hammers, so I think maybe justifiable to turn this guy briefly into a carpenter to get it done in one more, one fewer turn. Rum. Cotton, I guess. And what about this guy? Plowing the prairie here, I guess. Slight problem here is um oh no that's very nice. What we want now, we want a lot of things. But, right, Jamestown builds docks, that means we can put this fisherman to work. Seven food is pretty damn good. Uh, it would normally be six, but the river makes it better and decreases it to seven. Lumberjack, put this guy back on distilling. Because it has to be a lumber mill. I mean, I really do want that wagon train up as a matter of some urgency, but. This seems like the way to go. Yeah, 
Planning for forest, by the way, is best for logging. If we put this guy somewhere else. Broadly forest, not so good. Conifer for forest is great. Maybe I should talk about production now. What's things, one thing that's important to produce is food. I'm actually producing way more than I need. Maybe this guy could be... Carpenter? Yeah, you need to, need to produce more food than you're eating or people will starve and disappear. So, so I mean, the basic resource for construction is wood. This, this lumberjack is great, making 14 of it. This guy's kind of pitiful, if only turn three of that into hammers. So, 52 divided by three. It's going to take him a while, isn't it? Uh, 18 turns. That's a lot. And, yeah, can't quite afford to rush it. The other things I should mention are Liberty Bells and Crosses. So you can turn this guy into a statesman and he'll produce Liberty Bells. And I actually can't turn him into a preacher. See, uh, every colony just by existing produces one Liberty Bell and one Cross. And that's kind of important. It sort of encourages you to build lots of small colonies just to get this freebie. That, and of course, you get to mine your starting square twice for free. So you really are being encouraged to sprawl at the start of the game. Yeah, uh, crosses will generate immigrants. In fact, that is a... Um, you can actually see this in one of the reports, Religious Advisor. Yeah, since that's almost to the end of the screen, I'm very close to generating an immigrant. Also the Continental Congress. I, uh, going to, it's going to be quite a few turns before I get Henry Hudson. That's okay. So, one, two, three. Steady as she goes. Henry Hudson. Right. This is kind of crazy. All fur trappers output is doubled. And now the king started to be annoying. He's raising taxes uh, on everything. Well, I can't have that. So, but here you have a decision. You either accept it or you hold a party. You know, Jamestown Food Party, as in Boston Tea Party. Um, that thing is, we don't trade food at all, so this is completely harmless, really. 23 tons of food to avoid taxes, fine. Now, what, what that means is, we cannot trade food anymore. But if you look at this bid ask spread, it was never a good idea to trade food. You're expected to grow your own food. I guess I should talk about this. Um, these are the things you can trade. So food, which we cannot trade. You need it to eat, but it's fairly easy to make. Just put a farmer to work almost anywhere. Then you've got what you might call the cash crops. Sugar, tobacco, cotton and furs. Each of these, you can just sell it as it is, but they also have a refined form, you know, rum, cigars, cloth, or coats. And uh, it's a little bit unfortunate that rum is, uh, is the cheapest of these, but that's probably a side effect of me selling it. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the reactive economy at work, unfortunately. Then you've got lumber. Again, 1-6 is a ridiculous spread. You're supposed to bake your own lumber. And next we have this one, food, ore and tools. Now this is kind of interesting. For the, mo for the moment, it's what you can do is you can mine ore and then get a blacksmith to turn that into tools. But it's actually cheaper right now to just sell the ore here 
and buy tools. And I'll be doing that a while until I get blacksmiths up and running, which could really take some time. Next up, silver. Silver is awesome. Silver is a, a wonderful resource that uh, you only need to mine once. It's not like there's a mining step and a refining step. So you only need to, to have one worker at work to produce silver and it sells for an incredible price. Next up, horses. I should get some actually because they're cheap and you really only need to build two, sorry, buy two and they'll breed. Then you've got trade goods, which is kind of a reverse cash crop. It has one use and one use only. You buy it at Europe and sell it to the Indians. And the Indians will initially pay you a lot of money for it. And then you've got tools. Tools are needed to build advanced buildings. See, the, f like the first level buildings, they tend to just need lumber, which is turned into hammers. Some buildings need tools as well. Then of course you've got muskets, those are for killing people, <coughs> and we're going to get to that eventually. Steady as she goes. Right. Yeah, see, the Incas are absolutely insane. Here, just take 1,632 beads, like, ah! Yeah, okay, thanks guys, you're cool. Right, so this guy will plough, and this guy will build. But sugar plants are over here. Now getting a sugar planter is actually pretty easy. Uh, the first Indian village I ever found uh, will train people in sugar planting, so I just have to get a spare colonist, get him trained, and then uh, move him over to Roanoke. And the good news is he arrives there at about the same time as I finish the wagon train too. Oh yeah. That's gonna work. We get the sugar planter here for six sugar. And we'll need a farmer too. Two out of four food. Yeah, we got these two oases. That's kind of crazy. Because they turn desert and scrub forest, which would normally be terrible, into, well, farmable. More petty criminals and a wagon train, right? So I think now we can contemplate improvements like. Yeah, rum distillery. We can. Um, I think that's reasonable. If we improve this building, then this guy becomes much more productive. But do I want to build a schoolhouse first? Ah, uh, that's a tough question. But no. Yes, actually, I think we do. Schoolhouse first. One wagon train is going to do so much good. This guy can be back, go back to silver mining. This ore miner's a bit too good at his job, so... I think he can be the fur trader now.
We've done this. We've done nothing, man. The stockade. Right. So the problem here is that we've got a bit too big. I'm going to turn this guy into a dragoon, which is a. Uh, Perhaps the uh, best military unit that exists, so I guess we now need to talk about fighting since the Indians don't seem to like us. So um, there's basically two military unit types we can have. Um, the first one is the soldier. Uh, you make a soldier by just giving muskets to him. Um, to a guy, combat strength is two, and they can attack. That's kind of pathetic. A dragoon is what you get when you have um, horses and muskets. They're decent. The combat strength is three. The other thing we could use is artillery. That has kind of insane strength, but uh, it's expensive. They're basically cannons. Combat five, but when they attack, they attack at seven, and that's before that's before we get to the plus fifty percent that attackers always get. Oh, we have cotton now. Maybe that's fine. I think we just continue here, plowing here. And we should be able to mollify the Indians actually, because if I dump this cargo. See, if I remember, they wanted tools, so... Trading a full load of tools might keep them happy. Ha! Well, that actually helped us. In this case, though, hand them over. I don't need the furs, and it's hard to defend this place. I mean, I hate succumbing to a shakedown, but I think we have to. There's one other thing that's worth doing. We can bless these guys as missionaries. Now, <laughs> this may not be ideal, but that's the best we can do. This is good, right? Um, we bought these for 300, selling them for 552. Nothing right now, thanks. will make the Indians hate you a bit less. This, that's the idea. Yay! I mean, I was going to have to actually train them expensively, but once we get Master Carpenters, then... It's like we have everything we need. Blacksmiths. Yep, I will be needing those really soon. So I think that's enough for the first episode. We are at least profitable now. Uh, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.